about it. Uh, today, I mean Earth Science time. I mean, that isn't even true. Science time. Today we're talking about, uh, let's call this one... I'm still thinking. Uh, let's start over. <laughs> no, we can do it. Let's call this one uh, evidence of common ancestry and evolution. I'm going to make mine fancy by doing that. Ooh, look how fancy. Um, let's start with talk, thinking about our little lab that we had done. What did we do in our little lab? Someone, someone tell me what we had done in our little lab. The one we just got the evidence back for yesterday. Yeah, yeah. We made um, facsimiles of fossils. We remember we, we didn't ourselves make fossils because fossils have to be, or they're defined as greater than 10,000 years old. But we made casts and molds. So let's, let's start with that. Tell me, what, is that, what could that possibly have to do with evidence of common ancestry and evolution? Which, which specific word of the title does that have to do with? Evidence. Yeah, so let's underline that, and let's point down here at our little facsimile, which we understand is not actually a fossil. It's a facsimile, meaning it's like a representation. In the same way, Lucas, I assume you have uh, like action figures of Spider-Man, I would guess. Just by thinking about who you are, I would guess. Or maybe like some Marvel nonsense that I do not care about. Is Spider-Man from Marvel? Yeah. Okay, so I was right. Um, in the same way that Lucas is... the. This is Lucas, this is little Spider-Man here, and he's pew, 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 you know, you know how Lucas do. Um, in the same way that this is not Spider-Man, I, I tried to draw Spider-Man here, this is Spider-Man. Um, in the same way that this is not Spider-Man, it's a facsimile of Spider-Man. We did the same thing with fossils. So let's erase this, get that out of here. Um, we, we had a little soft blob of clay, and we took a thing, and we put the thing in the clay. We put the infinity sign in the clay and we squished it in there. And then we took the thing out, but there was a hole left in the shape of whatever we put in there, right? And then we filled that with, I forget what it was called, it was supposed to be plaster of Paris, but we filled it with some stuff that we got from Mrs. Mallory. We filled it in with that, so we filled the hole in with that, and then when it dried, out popped this thing that was the same shape, roughly, as the original thing, but was it made out of the same stuff as the original thing? No. And this is a cast. In, in nature, in non-human nature, this happens when a dead... Why would it have to be dead? Could, could this happen with a living organism? Why? Yeah, it'll wiggle around. It could happen with, like, a footprint. Right? If something steps here, yeah, it could make a trace fossil easily. But it doesn't, re it, it doesn't happen with a creature that is still alive. I mean, it could get buried alive, so maybe not never. But it's usually a dead creature or a footprint or something like that. Makes a hole, which we call a mold. And that mold gets filled in with, with material. And that material, when it comes out, is called a cast. And w what is true of um, the cast compared to the original thing? Since the cast is made of what? It's not made of actual, like, it's not made of plaster of Paris in, in nature. What is it made of, usually? No. Plaster. No. I don't know. Rock. And what's true of rock compared with bones of a fish or bones of a thing or, or leaf? It lasts longer. So this cast usually lasts longer. That's, what, that's our example of fossils. And how, is, how can that be evidence of common ancestry? Well, let's talk about common ancestry for a second here. Let's break it down common ancestry. What, what is this? What is ancestry? It's like a generation. Okay. Who, give me an example of an ancestor. Your great-great-great-grandma. Great, great grandma. 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 I, I don't know the language. Um, your great-great-great-grandma. Your, in fact, your great-great-great-grandma your great-great-great-great-grandma is probably also my great-great-great-grandma. This is, no, it's not a joke, Lucas. This is, this is the way it is because you, if you do some very simple math, you, who wants to be in the example? 
Spider-Man does. Um, I'll have Garrett do it because I want to draw his cast. <laughs> this is Garrett. <laughs> it is pretty accurate, though. <laughs> uh, how many parents does Garrett have? This is a. This is a. I love this question. Yeah, he's got two parents, Jake and Tammy, right? How many parents does each of them have? Two. Yeah, and I don't know their names. M and other M and M. Oh, squiggly M. And each of these people has two parents. You know, it's, you know, it's, we know that the way a human being, without getting too gross, is formed requires two people, doesn't it? That, that act, the process of forming a new human being, requires two people, historically. Certainly by this time, by the time we're talking about Garrett's great-grandparents, they were not doing in vitro fertilization. It takes two people. Each of these people has two parents. Presumably, I don't know Garrett's whole life, but presumably... The, the process of conception of Garrett took two people. Each of them took two people. Each of them took two people. If we go far enough back, you see the mathematical problem I was describing earlier is that this is exponential. One, sorry, two to the power of zero is how many Garretts there are. You're very unique. What is two to the power of zero? Do you know math? Two to the power of zero is how many Garretts there are. There's one Garrett. Special, precious Garrett. There will never be another quite like him. Two to the power of one is how many parents he has. What is two to the power of one? Two. Good. Two to the power of two is how many grandparents he has. How many is that? Four. Two to the power of three is how many great-grandparents he has. So far, so good, right? Try again. It's not six. It's eight. It's eight. Three to the power of two is nine. Two to the power of three is eight. Two to the power of four is how many great-great-grandparents he has. Do you start to see the mathematical problem? How long is it going to take before we get to 30 million? Not very long. We, we're doubling this every time. It, before we get to 30 billion? Well, it certainly won't be the whole length of human history. Because they're not unique. This person, I'm not saying anything specific about your family tree, Garrett. But this person could also be this person. When we get far enough, pa far enough back, they are. They're the same person. You don't have... You don't have 90 billion ancestors when you go back 2,000 years, or however many generations that is, 32 generations. I don't know, I'm not doing exponential math in my head. I'm just saying that eventually we get to a larger number of people than have ever lived. And, and how does that work? Well, the, the poor mathematical analyst would say it doesn't. The, or the Earth must be only 2,000 years old or whatever. But if we realize that these two can be the same person, we don't have to have 90 million unique ancestors. We just need to have 90 million people, and some of them are doubled up or tripled up or hundreds of times. Genghis Khan, it is said, uh, is in your DNA, one, like he's related to everyone on Earth because he had so many children, is a pleasant way to phrase it. Do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah, yeah, but still you, because you're, there's interbreeding. People, people, if there's one thing that history has taught, it's that people love to breed. And so they just do. And they breed with whomever they can. And that generates all these different genetic combinations. And these are all your ancestors. So what would this mean? What does the common here mean? So you, you agree with this, right? There, there is not, we're going to get into stuff that people do disagree with very quickly here. But this is not something people disagree with. Do you understand? There might be people, uh, uh, I don't know, um, political progressives who say this isn't necessary. You know, I could have in vitro fertilization. Um, I can't. I don't mean I. I mean that a human being can have in vitro virtual fertilization. We only need this. I'm not saying Jake and Tammy. We only need this. We don't need him anymore. And it's scientifically true. You know, you've got to have a place for the little tiny baby to grow up, and that's inside of the mommy's tummy, you know. Um, you need a little, you need this, you need the, once again, without trying to be gross, you need the genetic material of this, but you don't need him. He sucks. History, history tell us, not Jake, not Jake, Jake's a nice guy, but the, the, the male, let's just make this not Gary so that we're talking about a, a random human and not Garrett Tolman and his family. <laughs> the way I make it into a normal person instead of Garrett is I just get rid of his cast because that's abnormal. Um, but we... And we're getting a little bit off track, but, the, but we need the genetic material of this. 
We need the genetic materials. No matter which way, there's no, um, I, I shouldn't say no. I'm not aware of a way that you can, without some heavy duty science, use only the genetic material from this person. We can't, humans don't undergo what is called parthenogenesis. We don't, a uh, uh, woman cannot simply give birth. There needs to be some genetic recombination from the man, as it were. You with me so far? We don't disagree about this. I was gonna say, there may be some people who think that this is not strictly speaking necessary, but it is still the, it is the most popular way to conceive a child, is to have a, both a man and a woman. We don't disagree with this. Everyone's got grandparents. They might be dead, but everyone has had grandparents. We don't disagree with this. A thinking person doesn't disagree that maybe, at some point up here, Garrett's great, 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 great grandpa might also be my great, 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 great grandpa. We don't disagree with that. We know that people are related. You're aware of things like third cousin or fifth cousin. It is said that if you have a random person um, that you're just talking to at Arby's or whatever, <clears throat> that that person is probably no more than your fifth cousin. Meaning you share one, two, three, four, five, you share great, 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 great grandparents at some point in the past. No one disagrees with that. Now what people do disagree with is that if we get far enough back, we're gonna, you know, you ever, have you ever seen this in, in charts? A little break. We're not talking about each increment as an exponent. Let's say we're talking now about two to the 1,030th power. 1,030 generations back, something like 100,000 years ago. That this, now, these people, of which there would be, there wouldn't be um, 10 to the 1,030th of them, but there would be with overlap, as I said before, that these people were probably, I should have used a higher number, um, let's do 14,900. These, these people are now not really people. They're different from us. They're not, they're not human beings. We would not classify them as human beings. That's where people start to disagree, is that, that, that this can't have happened, that human beings were always human beings and have always been human beings and will always be human beings. But the evidence, the fossil evidence suggests, and we do find fossils of this. Um, Tegan had talked about Australopithecus, hadn't you? Do you remember that? No. Lucy. The Australopithecus fo fossil found in China? An ancient human being. An ancient, an ancestor of human beings. We can tell from the DNA, uh, to whatever extent that exists, that that person would not have been sexually compatible with modern human beings. It would be a different species. We go far enough back, we get, I'm, what is this representing? These are what, when I'm increasing this number, I'm increasing the number of what's? Mm, yeah, but also, yeah. Generations, I would call them generations. We go another order of magnitude back, and they're primates, not, they're not chimpanzees. Human beings, let me tell you this, did not what we would say evolve, and this is a provocative thing to say, but human beings did not evolve from chimpanzees. But human beings, you, or even Garrett, um, and chimpanzee, which I, this is a chimpanzee, don't at me. <laughs> at some point in the distant past, shared a common ancestor. It was neither a human being nor a chimpanzee, which this is a poor draw. This is, this is neither a human being nor a chimpanzee, too. This is a trying to draw, but it looks more like a waffle, probably. Um, but they had a common ancestor. And if we go far enough back, get out of here, Garrett. I had two Garrett's on the board at once. That was, shouldn't do that again. If we go far enough back, human being and lemur. This is a lemur. <laughs> Share a common ancestor. Blah, blah, blah. If we go even further back, I'm getting up into the top of the board now, human being and dog. I can do a good dog, probably. Human being and dog share a common ancestor. So they're both, we would say this biologically, these are both, or all four, what? What class? Say it. You said it. Mammals. These are all mammals. They share, all mammals share a common ancestor. What evidence is there for this? Let's list three. Fossils. We, we find a common, of the people who um, disagree with this philosophically, and so they, they want it not to be true, the, they will often say that the fossils do not exist. That's wrong. The, we find fossils of every single what is sometimes called missing link. Um, 
I don't approve of that, but we do find fossils, evidence for common ancestry. We do find fossils all the dang time that tell us, maybe it isn't this exact common ancestor, but it's something that's closely related to the common ancestor, and so we know that there was a common ancestor. What other evidence is there? I, I love this next example from your book. That's not, that's not evidence. That's a, the, it's a unifying theory, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, what, what other evidence is there? I love this one from your book. You, you saw, you did a lot of questions about this. God bless you. It's about the little babies. Oh, embryology. Embryology. Meaning that if we look at the embryos of these organisms, they're very similar. When, when my wife was pregnant, this I'm probably my pregnant wife here. <laughs> uh, when my wife was pregnant, we could see in the in the ultrasound that when when Asher was just a tiny tiny little thing, the first time we ever saw him in the in the ultrasound, he looked like this. We called him Peanut because he looked he was the shape of a peanut and. Uh, it had not even little arms, but little nubs. And it really, if you're not trying to espouse any particular philosophy, and you're not trying to be inflammatory, it really does look like a fish. It really does. And that, that, people, that grinds people the wrong way, because people like to say, well, I'm not a fish. I was never a fish. But really, you, I'm, I'm not saying you were a fish, but you looked like a fish when you, when you, when you were in your mommy's tummy. S similarly, you looked at one point like a little reptile. When you got a little bit bigger, give me just a second, Miranda. You had some now some hind limbs, and you had a little tail. And you did have a little tail. We see this. You can see a little tail. You get a little bit older, and now you still have a little tail. You start to get a little brain. Started to get a little fingernail. Sorry, I forgot to draw the other leg. A little smile, a little happy face. And you start to become more and more like a human being. In fact, even after you're born, you get more and more like a human being. You had a question, Miranda. Um, so like tadpoles. Oh, tadpoles. Yeah, sure. Is that the example your book gave? Yeah, I like that idea, little tadpoles. That it kind of progresses through, um, and it's a common fallacy that we think that high, more highly like developed organisms, more complicated organisms are somehow better. Um, through natural selection than, than less complicated organisms like, oh, I'm better than a fly because I can think. But the fly has managed to survive as a group throughout geologic time just as the human being has. Uh, but <clears throat> we can kind of think of it as a progression of in embryology. It kind of goes from, as I said, fish. Well, really, let's start even before fish, which is a vertebrate. Just cells, right? When you start out, what, when you are conceived, when I would say your, your little life begins, when you are begotten, when you are conceived, we're, and we're not, like, once again, not trying to be gross, but when you're conceived, what are you? No, no, you're not single-celled. Double. You're double-celled. You're an you're a egg. You're your mommy's egg and your daddy's sperm, and that's what you are. And then you divide into a little zygote. You have four cells, and then you have eight cells, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you, so you, you're first a little pile of cells. You could even say, and I, I, you could say that you start as a single cell. You don't really. I mean, an egg is just an egg. A sperm is just a sperm. But together, they, are, they will eventually be you, or they will have been you. They will be your children. Um, but you start out as just a little, a little pile of cells. And then you are, you are not a fish, but you are like a little fish. You have gills. We can see in every mammal's embryo, when it's an embryo, it has gills. It has what we call gill slits, like a fish. It then is looking like a little tadpole. Like, a, what, what group of organisms have tadpoles? Frogs, which are amphibians. And then you start to develop your brain a little bit more. Uh, you don't ever get scales or anything like that, but you are, as it were, a reptile. The part of your brain that controls fight or flight is, is formed at this time. And guess who else can fight or flight? You. you can. But that's what I already said. Guess who else can fight or flight? A fish. Have you ever tried to grab a fish with your hands? Even like an aquarium fish? It doesn't just go, yep, here I am. It does not do that. Unless it's very sick, it doesn't do that. It tries to either fight or fly. If you have a little shark, it might try to bite you. Who has sharks, Josie? What? Is it you? Who has sharks? Someone in this room has sharks. Fia has sharks. Do your sharks ever bite you, Fia? No, do they, do they actually, though? 
What? Who? Someone has fish. I don't, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but someone in the school building has an aquarium that has sharks in it, whatever. Um, anyway, the fight or fight... Who? A shark in a jar. That thing is dead, so this is not going to... Anyway, anyway, as you develop a little bit more, you become like basal mammals. I don't know, I don't... Basal here meaning that... Less complicated mammals. Primates. And then when you start to be, you're more like a person, you're like a little person. And this is it, I'm not telling you, and I, I forgot to t tell my little speech that I always give kids at the beginning of this, and I will say it in a second if there's time, but do, do you see that this is also the, to ameliorate people with a different philosophical understanding than I have, do, do you see that this, it, it lines up with the theoretical idea of, geologic time of, of evolutionary progression. Do you see that this lines up that first on Earth there were little single-celled organisms, those became eventually fish, those became amphibians, those became reptiles, those became basal mammals when the dinosaurs died, and then they eventually evolved, as it were, into people. Do you understand that? that do you think it's a coincidence? Maybe you do, but the, the embryological data suggests this too. And then the last kind of data that we have is anatomical or morphological, anatomical data anatomical evidence or morphological evidence which is that if you cut open a dog let's just start there if you cut open a dog it has ribs it has a femur we, if you're a, if you're a horse girl you call it something like the cannon and the hawk but i don't actually know those words but they're the same bone we just have different names for them but they are the same they serve the same purpose in a horse as a dog as a person as a snake has ribs as a fish with has, which has a spine it serves even the same purpose as the legs of a uh, tarantula serves. And those, those, those homologous structures are evidence that we are all, and this is the point of this, that's what, this is what common ancestry all is. We are all one. All life comes from one place. All life is derived from all other life. And that's what I think is beautiful about this. And that's what appeals to me philosophically. And furthermore, and I know the reason this is inflammatory is because there is a... a a classic struggle, a perceived, in my opinion, classic struggle between someone once asked me, a student, Mr. Kime, do you believe in God or do you believe in evolution? And that, I want to, I'm not trying to tell you to believe anything specifically, but I want to posit to you that maybe you can have it both. I'm not saying that's what I do. I'm not saying that's what you should do. But consider that maybe it doesn't have to be either or. It isn't, do you want a cheeseburger or fries? You can have a cheeseburger and fries, can't you, baby? Once again, that is not my necessarily my actual opinion. Don't at me. Comments are disabled for this video.